How's it going, Grey Boys? It is week four of this 2022 season, and it's been a crazy season so far, just three games in. What was it? Week one, we beat a ranked UCF pretty handily. Then we get handled by Auburn on the road, and then we go on the road again and almost shut out Clemson, who was the number two team country in their own stadium. So uh, everything, I don't know, if we're following the trends, theoretically, we should get obliterated by Goldie this week. I mean, Minnesota is 0-2. The, they were ranked to start this season, but uh, they lost to an FCS team. So <laughs> I don't know. I can't feel that scared. Uh, lost to a 1-2 Colorado by a touchdown and then lost in overtime to FCS Southeast. We are favored to win this. If we don't win this, it's going to be supremely disappointing. But I mean, the trends say we're going to lose. So that's, I guess, what's going to happen. Now, right off the bat, we have a couple of things under the hood to take care of. I guess we can go to the depth chart for both of them. Um, if we head to our strong safety, Graham Lindsay was our freshman strong safety. Unfortunately, he's disappeared in one of our boosters, one of the bag men, uh, also known as a tier two channel member has brought in a new transfer. I don't know if you guys remember Leon Sandcastle, a uh, star player in our Coastal Carolina days. Well, this is his French cousin, Napoleon. I'm not sure if there's going to be any language barriers or not, but uh, bienvenue uh, to the team, Napoleon. I think that's how you say welcome in French. I don't speak French. I don't know. Hopefully he's able to get on well with the team. Let's take a look at our top 25, some ranked matchups this week. Always going to be important for us as we try to move back up the rankings. What are we sitting at number 20 in the nation right now? So anything big would be nice. Any sort of upsets would be big as well. We see Clemson only dropped to number nine after losing to us. Again, 27 to seven. We absolutely dominated them. Not a lot of ranked matchups. I thought there would be more this week. Tennessee at number 15 will play on the road at number 19, Florida. Uh, other than that, no ranked matchups for anybody. I guess if there's going to be upsets, they're going to be pretty big ones since uh, it's going to have to come from outside the top 25. And I'm trying to think. Let's take a look at some uh, stats real quick. Maurice Tate, 513 passing yards through four games, three games. It's not very impressive, but he's 12th in the nation. Although there's a lot of teams that don't have as many games played as us. RJ Rivera, 48th in the nation, rushing the football with 201 yards. And is Chris Rutger leading the team and 40th in the nation with 186 receiving yards. He probably has more touchdowns than most of the guys in the top 10. Uh, Tackle-wise, doesn't matter. Sacks, though. Smith and Whitfield with 7-4. and four. Smith again setting the school record for sacks in a game last week with 4. Just absolutely obliterating the Clemson quarterback. Not a whole lot of interceptions on the team. We have a field goal, right? Uh, 43 yards for Clark, and I was actually pretty impressed with that. Puts him almost top 25 in the nation. We do have a little bit of recruiting that we can do, and I think maybe can we start to schedule some visits? We want to start to get that out of the way. And looking again at the top stuff, I'm still not sure what we're going to do. We're still falling 15 a week to Texas. Uh, and Christian Grimmel has four visits scheduled. So if we're going to get in there, we want to do that quick. Elliot Erdman, we're losing 55 a week to Florida. So it's like we need to start winning and we need the teams above us to start losing so that the bonus points level out because this is going to be tough all around. Gaining with the tight end, Drew Allen. Dwayne Bell, we're falling 430. I don't know. Is it worth it? We could really jump up with the running back. He's got 94 speed, 95 acceleration, pretty good stats all over the place. Uh, we'll sink 700 into him for a week. Uh, I'm just not sure if we're going to be able to catch Ohio State quick enough. We can go ahead and offer a scholarship to Joe Fox now that we're in the lead with the corner. No one's to commit. I know we didn't wait until the bar was yellow or whatever, but that's not how I roll sometimes. And this might be a tough one because we are falling, but with the rest of our points, what is it? Oh, it's only 150 points. Uh, we're going to give him to Tymon Brooks for the moment. He's a good wide receiver. We could always use more talent there. Uh, and the rest of the offensive and defensive line guys, we're already kind of gaining. Uh, so I'm not in a huge rush to pick them up yet. We do have six players ready for his visit. So Christian Grimmel is one of those. He has a lot of competitive stuff going on. Texas has theirs week 11. We want to go after that if possible, but I'm not really sure how many options. Uh, week 13 looks like the game against Maryland will start to be the one where we will 
maybe load up uh, visits on. Try to get as many complimentary visits there as possible. As we said, send Elliot Erdman there. Keith Bryson can also go there as a complimentary visit. Oh, Snash, man, this is going to start to get competitive, but we are loading the linemen. And, oh, I don't know, with a guy like Austin Ash, we're already in the lead and gaining. So we actually want to schedule his visit a little bit sooner so we can send him... Well, let's go to the Iowa game. We'll hope that they'll stay ranked. It'll give us a good chance to beat a ranked opponent. And there's no way I'm going to trust us to beat Michigan. They are the number one team in the country. Uh, and they look really scary. Uh, so again, anybody that we're not like actively competing with or where we think it's going to be easier, we'll try to send them earlier to this Iowa game. I think that comes next week because, yeah, that's uh, week five and we're in week four. Uh, Dane Clemens Valde. Ooh, this is a tough one. We're going to send him. Can we send him late? No, we can't send him late. So we'll send him early and again, continue to stack those uh, complimentary visits. So next week now has a lot on the line. I guess this week does as well, but we're not quite as scared. Let's load into this one. Just an 83 overall for Minnesota, the Golden Gophers with an 88 offense and an 80 defense. Uh, I feel relatively confident. Another away game. Uh, I don't know. Let's go with the white helmet and the gray pants. I don't think that we've worn that this year. Last year, we made Goldie wear some interesting stuff. We're going to keep it that way. We're going to throw them in the anthracite, I think. Or, yeah, we'll just throw them in the anthracite. This is definitely going to be an interesting matchup. They actually have a pretty good offense, even though they've lost a couple of games to not good teams. They've been putting up numbers. It's just their defense. They are not stopping the pass, doing a decent job of stopping the run, but giving up a ton of points. We're definitely favored as we should be. High nine or high 80s overall for their top players, including a quarterback and a running back in there. Uh, H. Bryant, 28 to 50, five touchdowns, almost 400 yards passing. But we all know if uh, Maurice Tate can get going, he is going to be there. Hot streaks for all three of our top players. Makes me feel really confident. And I know it's always key of the game. Get Maurice Tate going and just see what he can do. So here it is, another day, TCF Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We'll hope for the best. Tails has yet to fail us this season, and it continues not to fail us. That's the first win of the day, as of course we are going to kick this football off. Week four means that even though we're playing in Minneapolis, we're still going to have fantastic weather. Just a two-mile-an-hour breeze today as Napoleon gunning down, immediately making an impact. As he gets the tackle, as the gunner on that kickoff. Who knew the French played American football? Certainly not me, as I'm expecting a run first and 10. We'll see what we can do. They will step back to throw. Gets tipped at the line, and... Oh, well, they had a guy uh, get his hands on it, but he couldn't complete the pass. I've been playing so much baseball recently that this feels way too fast-paced. Uh, maybe expecting a counter on this. Second and 10. No, they step back, looking to throw again, and it is dropped... Howard Bryant, 0-2 oh, oh, to, to start this, and it's 3rd and 10. I'm curious to see what we can do to try and stop these guys on this one. I don't know if I'm feeling confident. In the cover, 6, stepping back, trying to cover over the middle. Guys open, but a lot of white jerseys converging, and it's going to be a very quick 3 and out. Is just a gain of 3. Defense holds, and it's time for RJ Rivera to start to make his first impact of this game. As it's going to be the punt team out for the Golden Gophers. Only a couple of minutes into this first quarter. What can we do? Trying to set some early blocks. Just uh, kind of whiffed with Binkley and couldn't quite get the wheels turning for RJ on the eight-yard punt return. As always, with Seagater sliders, very important to get the quarterback warmed up. So our first play, instead of running the ball, we're going to go with the halfback slip screen to RJ. He picks up one block, picks up another, and there's a lot of space on the corner. Can't quite turn it. RJ had so much green in front of him, but it's just a 20-yard catch. That pancake that was set on, like, the safety or the DB, that first guy, that was a thing of beauty. Bentley in here is. We're going to run a read option. Derek won't get it. It's going to be Maurice Tate keeping it sliding down for a gain of five. And I'm just going to tell you guys right now, it is so hard for, for me not to just start throwing deep bombs. Uh, okay, let's give it to Derek Bentley off tackle again. Good blocking from the offensive line and a great spin move to find the crease in the first down. 
He might be caught there, Bentley, but on that one, I don't know. He kind of trucked through that last guy like a Ford Raptor or something. First and 10, RJ Rivera can get it. And, well, he's not quite as strong, but still, I mean, we can't complain about five yards on a carry. That one's going to give us a second and five at the 26-yard line to work with. Five wide, looking to pass is Maurice Tate. A open, not open enough. B wide open, and there's Jody Gentry as he catches it and steps out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Just got to make sure we hold on to the football, and so far it looks like we will have the advantage. We're planning to run a counter here. We'll see how the blocking is on the edge. RJ Rivera trying to stretch the run out. Can't do too much, can't get too fancy, but gives us a second and three inside the 10-yard line. And I think we're gonna go to the air. They're kind of stacked over the box. We'll step back, pressure coming real quick. Maurice Tate trying to escape. Isn't quick enough to escape the clutches of Josh Glover. So that's a huge sack and it's gonna be third and long. This is a really interesting spot. If we don't get this, I don't know if we go for it or just take the points. But hopefully it doesn't come to that. Stepping back, looking to throw Y over the middle. is open and it's Chris Rucker breaking a tackle into the end zone. A 19-yard touchdown reception again for the true freshman as Maurice Tate starts the game 3-3. Three three. And we're going to take a quick 7-0 lead. Our team is at the point now where if we can kind of get into a rhythm on both offense and defense, it seems like it's going to be hard for anybody to stop us as Napoleon says wee 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 to the return man takes him out of the play <laughs> oh you know i can't promise that that's going to be my last attempt at speaking french or doing some sort of french pun but i'm going to try to limit it <laughs> first and 10 this one a play action pass ball thrown away not sure if there was pressure there or what was going on but it's an incompletion and we know for a fact it's going to be a pass on this second down so i'm going to use our defensive end here we'll see if smith can get in there and cause some disruption. Again, four sacks last week. Plenty of time over the middle. London gets burned, and it's a first down as the Minnesota crosses or moves the chains for the first time. First and 10. We're bringing pressure up. Blitz, and oh my gosh! Bryant just got obliterated. Royal gave him the Royal Rumble smackdown there. Second and 16. This one's going to be a run. Kind of a weird reverse. They get four yards back, but that puts them in a third and long. Now we just have to hope that our third and long defense is a little bit better than theirs because they gave up a touchdown. Certainly not what we want to give up. Looking. Oh, there's a sack. Howard Bryant. Oh, no. Things are falling apart, and it's fourth and 20 as we have just absolutely blazed Minnesota's offense. Clinton Whitfield, the big boy, making the difference on that play is, well, we'll send Napoleon back, see if he can get us an opening block as we're going to try to definitely switch the field here with RJ Rivera. If he can get his wheels turning, he might have the speed, turns the corner, but he's run out of room, so it's just a 21-yard return. I say just a 21-yard return, like it's a bad thing. Chris Rucker, the only player on the offense that's feeling warm, but... Uh, we're going to test our luck on first down here. Jeff Fontenot, Brian Curtis, maybe over the middle. Stepping back, Brian Curtis is wide open, and it's inaccurate. And oh my gosh, the safety just dropped a gift. All right, good to know. Maurice not fully warmed up, especially the first pass of the drive. Maybe we should have not expected that to work out. Still alive, though, on this one. Maurice keeping it, taking a little bit of a hit. There's a flag down. Got to expect this to be a clipping, right? Holding. Holding's not quite as bad, but... Uh, both quite a bummer we do get the chance to replay that second down but this time we're starting from the 46 as it's second and 15 stepping back B is open <laughs> oh Maurice you can't miss a guy that open that would have been a nice gain I'm gonna say this is four down territory and we can't rely on Maurice to throw 15 yards so it's RJ Rivera on another slip screen they reacted to that really well, but RJ with a little bit of space cuts it back inside. He's got a block and he gets tackled, but over the line for a first and 10. Oh, that was clutch. Good running, but even better blocking on that play. Absolutely love to see that as we have gotten down below one minute left in this first quarter. Give this ball to Derek Bentley to have him bounce it to the edge and then try to get north. Man, a lot of Minnesota players falling over like bowling pins on that one. So on the door of the red zone, can we get in is the real question. Why is open that little whip route? It's Chris Rutger. Tried the step back cheese, but just kind of backed it up <laughs> into the defender. 
Well, this is, uh, I don't think this is going to work. I've called an RPO. I don't like the look of it, though. So we're going to hand it off. Yeah, that, uh, that wasn't going to work either way. Actually, the blocking for the screen, it could have been really good. Uh, just unfortunate for us is that is going to end our first quarter. Up 7 nothing, threatening to score, but it is second and long. So, uh, who knows? Maybe we can have something good happen. Good conference game for us on the road. Trying to extend this winning streak and... I don't know. Maybe start to make the pollsters take us seriously. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't about to call another RPO there. But uh, fool me twice. Shame on me. So we're going to pass it. Which could also be a big mistake. X going to be open. Jeff Fontenot had space on his man. Maurice Tate didn't utilize it. So it's another third and long. And it's going to be another screen. Chris Rutger on the swing screen. He's got the skills. Can we do anything with it? Catches it. A couple of guys he has to make miss. He kind of made a couple of them miss. Gained positive yards. Fourth and eight. I think we kicked the field goal here. I know it's not super aggressive, but we're trying to make sure that we win the game. Making this a two-score game definitely helps with that. And the way our defense has been playing, who knows? We might shut these guys out. Biggest concern is, uh, honestly, going to be near the end of the game. Is the defense going to get too tired and give up a point? Or am I going to make a bad play call? Lewis, good job gunning. Ron Johnson kind of tabletop the man, and we held them to just a 17-yard return. As this third drive for Minnesota gets started here early in the second quarter, I'd like to ask you guys to like the video if you're enjoying it so far. Ooh, maybe we can have some weird glitchy stuff like that happen as Jorge Martin gets four yards. Minnesota coming into the hurry up. And I'm expecting a pass, but no, this is definitely going to be a run. Trying to hand it off towards the edge. There are white jerseys all over the place. And just like that, it's third and long again for Minnesota. I think the problem for Goldie on that one was that they tried to get a little bit too cute with it when they haven't been able to do anything normal on offense to begin with. You have to have some success to get a little bit wild, and they're just going to hand it off on third down. Goes nowhere. Another three and out. And uh, actually, our defense is the reason why RJ Rivera has so few rushing yards, because he's spending all of his energy returning punts the past couple of weeks. Um, Hasn't been too successful. Probably, oh, the spin move. I was going to say, probably not too successful on this attempt, but he freed himself up for an extra couple of yards. All right, well, uh, get ready to call me stupid here because I don't learn from my mistakes, and we are looking to throw it deep on the first play of the drive for the second drive in a row. Stepping back, waiting. Nobody's really open. Y could be there. We're going to scramble, especially since Y ran out of bounds. Maurice doesn't get tackled, but he does step on the... Uh, line there so just a 15 yard carry six first downs for us now to the golden gophers one Derek bentley coming in you know we're gonna run it up the middle lower in the shoulders a little bit and getting a solid four yards we are at the point where you know they have to respect the passing and the running game so we're able to do both pretty effectively and you know they tried to get cute with it and had no success we're gonna try the same chris rutger yeah, i mean he got positive yards so we can't complain. A three-yard gain on the jet sweep. Two of three so far on our third down conversions. And we will try to pass again. So no guarantees that this one is completed. Brian Curtis. That was a beautiful pass from Maurice State. Good route running as well. Gives us a first and goal. So far, we are perfect inside this red zone. Let's see what RJ can do. Running off tackle, needing some blocks. And then I kind of ran it straight into a defender. I thought the blocking was going to hold up. Saw a tiny gap, but we couldn't hit it in time. And our star freshman running back not having a great game so far. Who knows? Maybe on this counter, the edge can open up. He can make somebody miss. Uh, I mean, gosh, he hasn't had a big run in a, a few games, it feels like. But he does have us close inside the five. I do not at all feel confident doing this, but we're going to try a triple option. See if we can make the right reads. We got to hand it off. Bentley. Oh, a dive across the line maybe makes it. But in this game, diving is such an easy way to fumble. And I'm not having any of that. Fourth and goal inside two minutes in the half. We're set up for the read option. I'm going to see maybe if we can get them to jump. And no, we're going to go at Maurice Tate. He's going to be held short. 
<laughs> Again, thought about diving, but I don't want to fumble the football. If I got north, maybe there's a chance. He's not quite quick enough to string it out like that. Guess the question here is, can we stop these guys? Gotta bring the pressure. Calling this one a run up the middle. We want the safety. Royal can't get there, but it's Avery Binkley, I think, getting the stop, and it's a safety. Nowhere to go for Jorge Martin. Terrible decision to run it, and that, I don't know, just go fullback dive. So a minute and 32 kind of looks like a big brain move because we get the ball back and the free two points. It's uh, 0 to 12. Jody Gentry, not the best return. Those punts kind of a little bit awkward. And with all our timeouts left in this much time, definitely a threat to find the end zone. I'm looking deep always. And on this one, over the middle, it's Jeff Fontenot holds on to it for a first down. That one's stopping the clock temporarily. We'll see what we can do here. Kind of looking for the running back. We're going to give it to RJ Rivera. Oh my gosh, there's a lot of anthracite colored jerseys in the area. We're going to take our first time out there. I think we probably could have gotten away with going hurry up or even just letting a little bit of clock burn, but it gives us a chance to breathe and think about it as we will step back to pass. Pass that Brian Curtis was found open on earlier ends. Oh. Got it to him, but safety's playing up a little bit more that time, so he's able to jar the ball loose. And this isn't guaranteed for us. Third and eight, obvious four down situation, I think, at this point. We will step back, looking to throw Fontenot on that curl. It's going to be wide open. Good job holding on to the contact. That's another first down. And, man, I hate that their safeties are playing back, although Gentry or Stone, somebody's going to be open on this one. The corner broke with Stone. I thought he was going to stay with Gentry. Oh, that's that hurts. I feel like we played that, right? I just made the wrong read. Maybe gave up uh, a chance at our biggest touchdown pass in a while. Well, we'll step back. B's going to be open. Out routes to... <laughs> oh, no! Jody! It just bounced off of his shoulder. That was such an obviously easy first down to get him out of bounds as well. But now it's third and ten. We're going to try a play action. We got to run. Maurice Tate in trouble. A is open. Can he get it there? Stone comes down with it. And he goes out of bounds inside the three. What a throw to make on the run for Maurice Tate. Especially kind of like having to contort his shoulder. Typically when you roll out to the left, you don't want to throw it. But that one, too hard to pass up and it works out. That'll give us 37 seconds left to punch this one in. So we want to try and burn the clock here. If not, just score immediately. RJ Rivera up the middle, gets stopped, but he gets a yard in the process. The goal here obviously is to score about as time expires, but I might try to get a little bit cheeky with it and try to force uh, a chance at a kick six. So second and goal, we're going to let this burn down to 10 seconds and then snap it. Hopefully we don't screw ourselves over on clock management outside the pocket. Rivera burning every second possible, and then we step in with six on the clock. It's going to be, well, we're, let's go for two. Try to make it as close to a three touchdown lead as possible here. I honestly don't think that this play is going to work, but I'm going to try it anyways. The strong toss. Let's get Robertson out a little bit in front. We want as many blockers out on the edge as possible. And Oh my gosh. <gasps> no! I thought it was so easy. The beautiful block from Robertson. I. How do we not score there? That was an incredible diving tackle to save that. I kind of let off the gas, if I'm being honest. And we're going to just try to cheese him now because I'm angry. Or we can recover the onside kick. Six seconds. I don't think that Maurice has the arm necessarily to really gun it down there. So we're going to try to get off a quick throw. A over the middle. Oh, my gosh. No comment. No comment on what that was. All right, well, let's throw up a Hail Mary. If we can score points out of this, it'll be actually kind of a miracle as... I hit right bumper and he didn't throw it. Oh, RJ Rivera was wide open. I tapped right bumper, but my, like, two-decade-old 360 controller just didn't pick up the input. Oh, what a wild ride the end of that half was. 18-0 as we head into the locker rooms. Absolutely thrashing Minnesota. And it should be worse. It should be 28 to nothing. 10 points left on the board just like that. Can't get played too much. Uh, we do get the ball to start the third quarter as well. The defense has been phenomenal. We don't see safeties on this channel very often. So that is... Oh, it's really nice to see. 
And if Maurice just releases the football there, very likely this is a yeah, even bigger blowout. Again on the road. We have performed well on the road for the most part. Let's just finish it off in the second half here. Can't quite shake off that last play. It felt like such an easy pitch and catch to RJ on that late wheel route. Uh, but it just wasn't meant to be. Good return out to the 35 on that one. If we're lucky, that will be the only kick return that we have all game long. Uh, we're going to run the ball here. And we're definitely not going to burn the clock, but uh, we might be running it a little bit more this half. Last thing I need to do is start throwing interceptions and allow Minnesota chances to score the football. So anything we can do to avoid that would be great as we're going to hand this one off to Robertson. And if he could have cut it north sooner, there was tons of space, but just couldn't quite get the legs moving. And it's third and six. Guess the question on this one is, uh, is Maurice's arm cold after the halftime break? We're going to find out real quick here. Throwing it to Derek Bentley. He holds on. And that'll move the chains. We're kind of in a nice fun spot where we can do this, but we're going to run another RPO there out in the man, so can't run it. Guess we're going to hand it off to RJ Rivera. And oh, he has a lot of space. Draw plays don't work all that well in this game. That one worked phenomenally. It's now 12 first downs for us to Minnesota's one. And oh, it just feels good every single time that we say that. A was open, X is kind of open. And I thought about maybe waiting around and trying to find somebody late, but we'll just scramble and take our yards. Sometimes I feel like uh, we get into trouble when I try to do too much on those plays. So I got to be maybe smarter about those. Second and four up the middle. Rivera, plenty of space. And the Jets just kicked on to avoid getting tackled from behind. He's starting to get his yards. Look at that. 237 yards for us to six for the Golden Gophers. Derek Bentley's in to run a little bit of a counter. This is an awkward one. What, what the heck kind of... Huh. <laughs> that was weird. I've never run that play before. I don't know if I ever will again. How about another RPO? <laughs> I don't really like it. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't like it at all. Hand it to RJ Rivera, and oh my gosh, those RPOs are starting to work really well. We had so few mistakes from last week to correct it. The offense, I guess, able to practice a couple of new plays, and it's working out really well for us as Maury State gets hit in the back pretty hard on a keeper on that read option. Good to know Minnesota there to keep us humble when we start to have some good plays. But can they keep us out of the end zone is the real question. Right bumper was open. B is wide open if we can get in there. Jody Gentry holds on through the contact. A little bit late making the throw, but it gets there in time. And Maurice has his second passing touchdown of the day. As, what, that's going to be 25? Well, let's we'll just keep going for it. Uh, see if we can get two. All I want to do is just uh, keep running toss plays until we figure out one that works. Rivera... In the backfield to get it, as we would expect. Neal in motion, maybe to help get a block. The edge sealed, and that time, RJ gets into the end zone. This will be 26 to nothing. It is, oh, just a fantastic day. You know, after this, we'll head down to the Mall of America. Maybe go down to a Culver's and get ourselves a Butterburger. Oh, absolutely fantastic. Okay, well, I guess the job's not done. <laughs> Jorge Martin with a good return there. Defense, only giving up six yards. Let's see if we can lower that number a little bit here. See if we get hit with the hubris here. Uh, first and 10. Kind of feels like this could be a run, but they will step back to pass. Really hasn't worked out all that well. This one could be picked off. Moore drops the interception. Oh, I thought he had somebody open on the right side, but deflections, I guess, are okay. Good news is, for the most part, we can just afford to keep these guys in the man coverage because we're not getting torched. This one, again, stepping back, looking to throw quarterback all the time in the world. He's hit as he's throwing, and... Well, if anybody's going to get beat, it's London. He had definitely a chance to jump that route. This is this is what I'm talking about. We get in these spots now, and I have to be worried about uh, Minnesota being in field goal range, trying to bring some pressure with Smith. Pressure maybe getting there. And look at that, the comeback route. And it's another first down. This is going to start to get really frustrating. I can't get off the block with Smith either to try and push him back. Could be a run here. They will step back and over the middle again. Caught for three yards. They're definitely in field goal range. We just have to get them to where they want to go for it on fourth. Who knows? Maybe we can cause some problems. 
and see an interception. That's going to help us. A false start, back him up five yards. Oh, second and 12 from the 26-yard line. Got to expect them to keep passing, right? This looks like a screen. No. Over the middle. First and goal. Man, coverage starting to get torched all of a sudden. This uh, hurry-up passing attack is doing numbers. Maybe Quentin Whitfield can get in there. Nothing thrown out of the back of the end zone. Incomplete. Maybe a chance to make some substitutions. One thing is certain. Uh, our coverage has got to be getting a little bit tired. This has been a, one heck of a drive. Minnesota trying to score their first points of the game. Quarterback rolling out. Rolls back inside. Hit as he's throwing. Oh, we needed a sack there. But it's incomplete in third and goal. It was supposed to be a designed rollout, but the coverage was maybe a little bit too good. Contained him too well. And we'll see. Can they find the end zone? This is a big play. <laughs> the running back dropped it. <laughs> oh, they're going to go for the field goal. Worst case scenario for us. As I'm going to send it. Try to block it. No way. Oh, we actually got kind of close. Minnesota scores, though. And the shutout is over once again. Well, I was really hoping that that would be our one and only uh, kick return at the start of the half, but here we go again. Jody Gentry fielding it. Oh, he's got some blocks. Jody Gentry, no, not quite fast enough. 87's a speedster. Don't let his size fool you. We got uh, two minutes still left in this third quarter, but oh my gosh, uh, how can I not just throw up the football? I'm feeling so angry that we don't have the shutout now. A could be open. Y was wide open, but Maury's got obliterated trying to scramble. If we had rolled out the other way, uh, it was like Stone, I think, maybe uh, Curtis. Somebody was coming open. Bentley on the little halfback swing screen, getting some great blocking from the wideouts. Makes that a third and manageable. And I think we just got to run it at these guys. Let Derek Bentley continue to do work. He's had a great game so far. No reason to take it away, although uh, uh, my thumb just spasmed and he lost all his momentum wiggling around in the backfield there. Already given up the shutout. I'm going to go for this. I want our offense on the field. Goodwin in at the running back spot. Not sure how good his hands are, but I am looking to scramble immediately. Or we, yeah, just give it to Goodwin. Running back holds on. Third stringer doing some work. And Lionel gets his 12 yards. You know, the best part about these games where we blow them out is that we get to see a lot of the backups that we wouldn't normally see uh, in big games because I think we're going to play them for the entire fourth quarter. And that fourth quarter is coming up awfully quick. Five seconds left in the third here. We're going to get one more playoff, one more bomb for Maurice Tate. Or he can get sacked. <laughs> X was starting to come open. But I don't think Maurice can get the pass there in time. So it's a loss of eight as we throw the fours up, head into the fourth quarter up 23 points. And it's going to be the second string taking over from here on out. Our third downs have been not great. And now that we have a new quarterback in, it's going to be really hard to make an 18-yard throw accurately. So as we've seen so many times with us and the AI, it's time for a slip screen. Bentley, uh, not getting anything. I don't think that this is possible. We're going to try something here, though. Derek Bentley counter out of the Wildcat. Uh, this is, we're giving them the football back. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't give him to get out of the backfield. <laughs> what, was, what was going on there from the offensive line? I guess that's our second string in effect. Oh, that hurts. That hurts a lot. We'll see if Minnesota continues to be aggressive trying to score the football. I wouldn't be surprised. This one throwing it up, and it is... Avery Binkley somehow not able to get to the football there. If Minnesota had played like this from the start, maybe they would have had a chance in this football game, but it's just maybe a little bit too little too late. This one's going to be a run, and it's a first and goal inside the five. Jorge Martin starting to pick it up. Again, second string defense in though, so a little asterisk. And I'm bringing pressure, trying to bring the blitz on this one. Seeing if we can get there right up the middle. Can't do it. Into the end zone. Caught for a touchdown. You know, the final score is going to make this game seem a lot closer than it really was. And oh my goodness, they're going to go for it. Uh, Okay, maybe you have to be a little bit cautious about the counter. Could see a run to the right. We'll see. Pressure. Yeah, out route was wide open. Couldn't get there in time. 
was that, 26 to 11? What a weird score. Oh, brought the onside team out. And they're just going to kick it away. Chris Rutger, sorry. Not going to let you return that. We're going to take the touchback. And before we give Minnesota any more hope in this game, it's time to start burning the clock out with 5.03 left in it. Bentley getting the handoff. Try to boost his stats up here a little bit. You know, the thing is, even in these blowout games, we're not scoring a ton of points. Like last week, we scored 27. This week, 26. It's been dominant, but, you know, we're not putting up 50 on them. I think that might be my only criticism. Also, can we talk about how bad our second string uh, offensive line is? Because they are getting bullied right now. Absolutely obliterated. Going to throw another slip screen because it's the only thing Albert can complete. But it's enough for the first down. Dan Bentley just driving the legs, getting all those extra yards. All right, well, technically, Albert's 2-2 two two passing. So we're going to give him a chance to throw something downfield. Little play action. Pressure's going to be coming immediately. So much for downfield because we threw it backwards to Ryan rushing. It was completed, but I don't know how much that really matters at the end of it. Uh, oh, Just keep throwing. B's going to be open. We couldn't get it off in time. Hit as he's throwing. It's incomplete. Third and 11. Man, Minnesota is feasting on our second string. Now, we could have been burning the clock a little bit better than this, but this is why you bring your second string in, to get them game time when it matters. Ugh. That's a painful incompletion. I know Albert has done so much for us, but just not today. Sit on the bench a little bit here. Think about that incompletion as we will punt this one away. Allen chasing it down inside the 10. Good cheesy little punt there with two and a half minutes left in this game. So the two things that we can really take away from our two blowouts, uh, we're not scoring a lot. We're not completing the game, not converting enough as thankfully they just dropped that pass. And we're just not able to finish strong. You know, we've shown signs, just not all the way there. Bad user for me. Good little crossing route. For a second, I thought maybe we'd have a chance to bring some pressure, but it's not the case. Look at the play art. Why would... Somebody's wide open. The... <laughs> My linebacker's recovering the wrong guys. Minnesota all of a sudden thinks that they're the best team in the world. Just, like, you've already lost. Stop. Stop. You're going to get your players injured. Absolutely annoying. They won't give up. Meanwhile, the fans in attendance here think that this is the greatest uh, comeback that they've ever seen. There's going to be another guy wide open there. It's just like oh, when I call my man coverage, it's not aligning them properly. And out of the hurry up, I don't have time to get them in the right spot. I had to take a timeout. That is so annoying. Okay, Minnesota is, uh, well, they're on the kill list. Any chance that we have in the future to destroy this team, we're going to take it. Absolutely disrespectful when you're getting pummeled like this to just keep playing the way that they have. And you know, we're bringing the first team back in. If this is how you want to play it, two can play at that game. Not allowing them to try and disrespect us like this. Bring it a blitz, it's not going to matter because they still have their second string defense on the field. So they think that they're great abusing us, but it's all over for them. Really, really angry that we're having to even think about doing this. Stepping back. <laughs> Idiot just dropped it, but there's a flag down. What are the odds this goes against us? Okay, we can decline this. Thank goodness. Well, now they're on the onside kick formation with a minute and 42 left. We have two timeouts. Should be enough for at least one score. How great would it have been if we could have taken that home? Well, I guess you guys should consider yourselves lucky because I was ready for this game to be over, but if they're going to do this, we're going to try and slap it right back in their face. We need this margin of victory for the polls at this point. The only way this could go poorly for us is if we get somebody injured, but even if that happens... It was a worthy sacrifice to the cause. B over the middle, wide open. Jody Gentry, first and goal. Minnesota taking their timeouts, looking real stupid. I don't know if I felt this sort of animosity towards uh, one of our opponents in quite a while. That's probably picked off. Oh, no. I, I saw that I was, like, triple covered. I, I got no excuses. I kind of thought I could throw it over the top of him, but uh, I got to remember, since the A14, that could just get a jump you know, 30 feet in the air if it means getting an interception. 
Now, not only have we not increased the lead, but we've made Maurice look worse and we've now lost the turnover battle. Uh, at least uh, Smith can get a sack right there. It's like funny to the point where or making me angry to the point where I'm laughing. I like they're spiking the football. At the end of the day, I guess it is still just a nine point game, but you got to be kidding me right now. These guys have no quit in them. And it's not a, it's not a good thing today. What do you want to bet they try to throw a slant here? A quick slant to try and get the completion on fourth and four. This could be our one turnover of the game. A turnover on down. Smith hitting the quarterback as he's throwing and they caught it, but short of the line to gain. Turnover on downs or did they call that a first down for him? All right, I guess it's our football. There was no turnover on downs thing on the score bug, so I wasn't certain. Let's just uh, maybe throw up another interception. X is coming kind of open. Had to get rid of that football. This is just pissing me off at this point, and it's not worth it. Uh, I've called a halfback pass. Uh, let's see what Bentley can do through the air. Oh, or he, he can just get sacked. I don't know why I'm continuing this. Minnesota took their final time out there. Oh my gosh. Well, we're going to let Derek continue to try and throw. <laughs> try being the key word there. We haven't had really run out of the wildcat very well huh basically the last play of the game uh but i refuse to not go for this chris rutger is our pitch man as we're looking for a triple option if they make us hand it off to bentley it won't work out but uh we're gonna snap this at 10 seconds and yeah bentley getting it derek actually got quite a few yards out of that if we didn't take the sack it would have been good enough it's a turnover on downs though uh, let's see if they just throw the football here or if they're going to try to run it. Well, I don't know. Minnesota's dead to us. That's all that we really care about. This one picked. Oh, I thought Whitaker got it. Not quite picked off. Couldn't jump the route in time. Still caused an incompletion. <laughs> let's see what they can do. Two seconds left and they're still passing the football. Quarterback takes the sack. Yeah, he deserves that one. Oh, George Smith is second of the game. Clock expires. That was a doozy. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so conflicted. Emotions all over the place. Maurice's player of the game. Uh, I don't know what to feel about that one. <laughs> it's just... I mean, we got the win. We didn't get blown out like uh, I kind of expected at the beginning. We almost blew them out, but then put in our second team and they got obliterated, so... <laughs> At least we know we don't have a lot of depth, and that probably means that we should have kept the second team in there because if we take too many injuries, we could have our season over really, really quickly. Well, that was probably the most annoying blowout I've ever played in. I don't even know if we can call it a blowout now. We gave up 17 second half points uh, and only ended up winning it 26 to 17 after the big lead that we had at the end of the half. Uh, just weird. Uh, one rushing yard for Minnesota, but 206 passing, and it came in a flurry. Just one big pass after another as they picked on our second string uh, pass coverage. We lose the turnover battle. We win every other battle. Just absolutely bizarre. Maurice Tate, offensive player of the game. We already know that. George Smith defensively. He had four sacks last week. He has another two this week. I mean, he's going to win some awards for sure this year all weird things and at the end of the day we can't complain we are three and one got the job done uh at the end of the season we're not going to look back and say oh we should have won that by more we're just going to be happy that we have a win no matter what and iowa i think was on upset alert so we will advance to week five and hope that the hawkeyes are still ranked since we sent a bunch of recruits to come visit this week and you know beating a ranked opponent really helps with those visits Drew Allen ready to visit. We might send him this week. 87 overall tight end. The sooner we could get that committed, the better. But a bunch of other guys ready to visit this week. And we move up to number 15 and Iowa did lose. So I don't know. We can't be upset about it, but it's not great. Oh, they are a low overall. If they're a lower overall than us, you know it's not good for the Hawkeyes. Big 10 kind of been struggling. Let's take a look. Why did we jump up five spots? Were there some upsets like we predicted? Obviously, Iowa being one of them. Who else fell? Top 10 teams? Syracuse, Cal, 
both taking losses. Tennessee lost to a Florida. West Virginia uh, at 14 took a loss. So did Purdue. Uh, Iowa, TCU, Mizzou all dropping out. So there is the start of the chaos that we've been looking for. Army plays Auburn. Uh, I don't expect much, but Army has had some success in this dynasty. Maybe they can upset the team that was able to beat down on us. I mean, gosh, Auburn, 45 to 6 at Kentucky. They have been doing work. They're my team to beat. Obviously, Michigan and Texas are also both undefeated. I guess Michigan did a decent job beating down Akron, but I don't know. Feels like the Auburn Tigers are at the top of it right now in my eyes. Unfortunately, though, that is going to have to be the end of this episode. If you enjoyed this one, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and then let me know in the comments what you think about that game. Am I right to feel disrespected by Minnesota? Or did they have enough time to realistically have a comeback? I mean, we did put in our second stringers. If we keep in the first team, it probably doesn't go down that way. But I'm curious to hear your guys' takes on that. After you've done all that, first off, go watch our first episode of the Seattle Mariners franchise on MLB The Show 22. And then head down to the description where you can find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, our community Discord, and the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Grey Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.